Hey everyone, let's talk about the Isle of Cats, which again is on Kickstarter right now, and you can click on the campaign page or there'll be a link there for it, and you can see all of the final stuff, but the main thing is the playthrough that I just did, also linked in the description, that shows you all of the components and how the game plays and stuff. This is just what I think. So, we think this is absolutely fantastic. We are, you know, obviously a little bit biased. <laughs> we really like uh, cats, so anything themed like that. We really like tile laying games. We are fans of uh, Frank's previous design, you know, the City of Kings and Vidoran Gardens. And so, yeah, it had a lot going for it going in. But I think that, you know, it's, it's a prototype, so you can't say... Uh, Definitively, everything's got a big asterisk around it when everything's not final. But this is has the potential to be one of the best, you know, of these polyomino tile laying games because it has an extra dimension to it. While not making the game about something else, the game is about laying tiles. But having this card drafting element around it in how you place those tiles is really interesting because. It's like in games where they let you spend points to get what you want done. In the Isle of Cats, you get given a load of fish at the beginning of a round, and then you get given a load of cards that you're going to draft back and forth, so you're going to get a better selection, you're going to maybe have to deny your opponent some of the things that you know that they are desperate for while trying to keep things going for yourself. But then after the draft... It's like uh, a part that I actually liked about uh, Terraforming Mars in that you get all of these cards and then you decide which ones you're keeping and you have to pay for the ones that you are keeping. So you are drafting seven, but you're not necessarily thinking of those to keep. You don't have to necessarily pay for the ones that you want to uh, just deprive other people of, for example. Uh, or if there's something really, really good, that you know, this is so, so good for me, but I don't know if I'm going to pay for it yet. We'll see what else comes up. You can just draft it and then decide later on what you're going to pay for, because that money is not just for the cards, it's also to be able to rescue the cats as well. So you are balancing all these different things, the number of rescue cards you have for your baskets and your speed as well if you really need to be first, your anytime cards that let you move cats around, let you take two turns in a row, things like that, the, the cards that let you get special tiles, the cards that let you get treasure tiles and maybe rare treasure tiles, they are going to be, the power of those is going to be different depending on how many rare treasures and the shape of them and everything that have come out of the bag at the point that you get the card. You know, all of this is in the air. You know, the permanent baskets, so, so valuable and so expensive, but probably worth it early on. Probably not worth it towards the end of the game. All of these different things are going on at once. And I think it's such a fantastic way of, you know, you are still just getting tiles and you are trying to place them. You know, you can't overlap them. You need to fill up the rooms and things. But it's not the be all and end all of it. Like a lot of the games, I made a quick list. I went on Borging Geek and clicked on the Polyomino family. I'm surprised that we haven't played as many of them as I kind of thought we would have. But thinking of a lot that's kind of work in a similar way. You have to excuse me, I'm going to look at a list uh, of games that r mostly we really, really enjoy, don't get me wrong. But games like Ariel, Baron Park, Copenhagen, C Cottage Garden, Indian Summer, Number Nine, Patchwork, Scarabia. Some of those have playthroughs on the channel. Check them out if you're interested in polyomino games. Those games either are just on your turn, pick a tile and you place it, or give you a little bit extra, like Cottage Garden has its grid of how you select them. Uh, Copenhagen has a bit of a ticket to ride, you know, color matching thing that determines what kind of uh, tile you're going to be able to place. All, you know, Copenhagen, we said a couple of months ago, really, really love, but they're on, you know, the lighter scale of things. I think the card draft and the... The currency, the having the fish to think about really elevates the Isle of Cats and that it's not just about that most of the tile lane games as well are mainly about just fill everything up. That's your aim for it. Like patchwork, that's pretty much your thing. You you do have a currency thing on top, on top of it as well, but your main aim is you know, fill up your quilt. Uh, and a lot of these are try and fill up all of the space that you can. Baron Park, fill up the things so you can get the bear statues and things. In the Isle of Cats, it's kind of, I imagine it's possible, but you don't, in our, exp in our limited experience, you don't really try and fill up your entire boat. You kind of go in knowing that that's not going to happen. And knowing that, what do you leave open? You're going to get punished for leaving rooms open. And that's, you know, you're going to take some punishment there. But how do we mitigate that? How do we... Which rooms do we go for then? Which rooms do we fill up? Which treasure maps do we go for to get us the extra treasure tiles? If we're going to be taking a penalty from 
the rooms, let's not worry about that too much and try and get more points from lesson cards or something like that instead. You are balancing all of these things and we've been, the, the scores haven't been, you know, like it didn't matter. The scores have been close enough that uh, we're both in the running for it. I've only played it two players, by the way. Uh, but there were vastly different ways we could have gone about it. And always, at the end of a game, I've been able to think about, you know, I should have done this. I shouldn't have been so focused about this. There was no need to worry about filling all of these rooms. I should have gone for this family. Or, you know, there was no need to worry about this particular color. I could have made this color a family instead. There were loads of different ways I could have gone about it that would probably have gotten me a better result. And that's always great at the end of a game to be able to think about that. And, you know, it's not, they aren't all of the tile lane games. There's things like uh, Jetpack Joyride. I do enjoy that as a separate thing. I don't class that in the others because the real-time thing really appeals to me and I think makes a big twist on tile lane games. And there are heavier games like, say, Santa Maria and Feast for Odin that do have uh, the polyominoes and tile lane as a big factor in them. But I wouldn't say that they are polyomino games first and foremost, even though, you know, you're, you're trying to fill your personal player board with them, you are doing it through, you know, dice drafting or a huge worker placement board and so many other things, you know, equally or maybe a, a greater element in the game than the polyomino part themselves. Here, the polyomino thing is first and foremost, and you do have those extra elements that really, really boost the game. And I think that I'm really, really looking forward to playing the final version, not that it's potentially going to be massively different to this one, because, yeah, it's, at the moment we are both really, really enamoured with this and really looking forward to it potentially knocking out a lot of these other polyomino games in our estimation. Anyway, that's just us, though. The playthrough will give you a better idea of whether you would be interested in. Surely. I played through the whole game. You can see it there. It's on Kickstarter. You can take a look at it. I'm on Patreon. You can take a look at me. You can help support the channel and help me make more playthroughs and things. I make good things, honestly. Look at the channel, there's hundreds of other things you can go and look at. I'm going to film another one right now, you'll see me wearing the same clothes if you can find out which one it is. You'll win a prize. You won't win a prize. You will not win a prize. Bye everybody!